ito ay makalimutan ko yung oras eh. So hopefully tonight, I will end uh, as long as I have something to say. <laughs> well, it's not going to be long tonight. Just, just uh, we have already read the passage. Pastor Benny actually asked me what is my text. Uh, so you don't have to read that passage again. But I would encourage every one of us, especially tayo mga pastor. I think the story of Uzziah is very relevant even in our time. Can you imagine, you know, reading the story of this man? I don't really see any, uh, you know, some kind of, wow, it is an event that happened many, many years ago. But the principles there are very relevant even in our time. So I want to talk about, uh, because the theme is about uh, worldliness, and I don't have to go over again that we all understand that the world is one of our enemies. As a believer, every Christian is facing a three-cornered fight. We have Satan, we have the world, and we have the old nature or self. But many of us, Satan does not really bother us. Maybe Dr. Abante, he will personally do it. Maybe. Because these are men of influence. These are men who are greatly used of God. So, siguro sa atin nga mga pastor, mga demonyo, demonyo nito lang, uh, ipadala. Uh, Satan will not do it himself. Sabi niya, siguro, uh, kayo lang dyan. Pero itong si Pastor Abante, I'm doing, I'm, doing, I'm doing this personally, myself. Maybe, I don't know. Is that possible? Because, you know, in, in a warfare, it is always understandable that if you remove the brain, you remove the leadership, there is always a possibility that, alam, yun, alam natin yan. We are not soldiers, you know, I've been a soldier yourself maybe, but uh, in the Christian warfare, uh, we all understand that uh, we expect casualties, there will be... Uh, backstabbing, so to speak. Kaya nga, in the times of the Romans, the, they were given the complete whole armor of God. I know, and we all understand that, that everything at the front is protected. Everything. There's really nothing, as long as the Roman soldier would be standing up, they wear a sandal that has spikes, that there is no reason for them to sway, but they will just be firm. As long as they're facing the enemy standing, the head is protected, everything is protected. But there is a part of a soldier that is not protected, the back. And the only way that you can be hurt or maybe killed is when you turn back. You will be exposed. Kaya nga, yung mga Roman soldiers, they are very ashamed kung mamatay sila at saka yung sugat nila nasa likod. Because it is an indication that they tried to, you know what I'm saying, right? Well, of course, there is another reason if you will be hurt at the back when your fellow soldier will hit you at the back. Ay, yun ang masama. Na yung naka, ano ba yun? Nakatama sa'yo, hindi yung kaway. Yung kasama mo. At sa likod pa, dahil your, your back nga is open. So they are ashamed of that. And we ought to be ashamed if we are going to hit our own brother at the back. We have a common enemy. And I also learned, because Paul was really exposed to Roman soldier along the, every time, you know, when he was arrested, when he was uh, in prison, he, was, he saw everything about the Roman soldier. And he have seen it maybe in his, in his lifetime. You mga Roman soldiers literally are invincible. Did you hear the word? Invincible. When the close ranks, kung naka, uh, ano ba yun sa Tagalog? Yung parang, huh? nakadikit-dikit sila, right? Because kung hindi ka magdikit-dikit, the tendency is you will be hit somewhere along uh, in the side. But when they come together on close ranks, 
They are almost like invinc- invincible. Invincible. Hindi matalo. I was listening to Pastor Tuason and he was asking the same question that I am asking myself. Bakit kaya tayong mga Baptist? We have already so much, you know, opportunities. We have the Bible. We have the Holy Spirit. I believe that some of the best preachers in the world are Baptist preachers. Because they preach the word. And why is it that we're still, you know, you, you understand what I'm talking about? I think one of the reasons is because they are, we are so fragmented. Hindi tayo nagdikit-dikit. So kung magkadikit-dikit lang tayo, I think we can do more in the ministry. Forget about your, just be united because that's really what we need. Especially in this time of crisis. Let me now go to my message. This will not be long. The story is about pride. And this morning, uh, this afternoon, Pastor Abante mentioned about, uh, you know, the Bible warned us about uh, the world. Love not the world. Of course, we all understand that the world is talking about the cosmos diabolicos. Uh, that's the only thing I learned in Greek, cosmos diabolicos. So don't expect to me to learn, throw some Greek word. Dahil nagihirap pa nga ako sa aking, tag, sa aking Tagalog eh. So, mas mahirap yung Greek. Uh, it is the system that we're uh, uh, against, you know. The, the wicked system of this world. And the Bible mentioned about the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Alam nyo mga kapatid, sa marami nating mga kaaway, I think the most dangerous is pride. Because pride is not something that develop overnight. You don't become proud because at one time you do something and you thought, you know, I'm okay. No, no. Pride develops over time. And sometimes, hindi natin yun makita. And this is exactly the point about the life of Uzziah. Someone said that if you throw a frog in hot water, that frog may survive. Yung pinakuluan na tubig, ihaboy sa ilonggo pa. Ha? Itapon mo yung frog. Most likely, the frog will survive. You might be saying, well, how, how could he survive? It's a hot water. Well, the reaction would be the frog would jump out. So, makasurvive siya. But if you put the frog in a cold, lukewarm, and slowly increased temperature, the proverbial frogs in boiling water reminds us that pride is developed over time and not overnight. And certainly pride go it before destruction. Three things I would like us to consider tonight about the life of Uzziah as a contact point or point of doctrine about uh, you know the pitfalls or we might use the title is stubbornness against humility. Because there was a time when the king became stubborn. He was not then, but eventually he became. So in verses 4 and 5, King Uzziah started so good. The Bible said he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. How can you argue that? There is a king who was doing what was right, not just in the sight of people. Notice, he was doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. Because pwede rin mangyari na meron tayong ginagawa na mabuti, pero hindi para sa Panginoon. Para lang sa mga tao. To impress people. And maybe ourselves. But Uzziah was not doing it for the people. He was doing what is right in the sight of the Lord. And this is a very challenging, you know, uh, buhay na gagawin mo ito. So he did what was right. He sought God. He was instructed by men of God. 
He feared God. How could you even say that Uzziah one day would become stubborn when he was doing what was right? But along the way, there were already some kind of signs of pride that was developing. Pride was developing. This is something for all of us, myself, you, tayong lahat. There is some kind of red flag na we sometimes ignore because we thought it's okay. Well, you have to understand that uh, these are signs of pride trying to develop or was developing. What was that? Number one, unique experience. Be careful with unique experience. Now, don't get me wrong. Not all the experiences and unique experiences are wrong. But you have to be aware because some kind of unique experience, you know, something that is not true to everyone. Hindi tayo lahat dito pinanganak sa pastor's home. Marami dito mga pastor's kids. I was not born in a pastor's home. I was born in a, in a, a you know, a religious home, so to speak, but we were not Christians. So I cannot relate the life of a pastor's kid growing in a pastor's home. But some of you, like Pastor Abante, was blessed, Pastor Ruben and others, blessed growing up in the home of a great man of God, the dean of preaching. Can you imagine what a privilege? He was 16 years old when he started and reigned for 52 years. Not many pastors started early and stayed that long. Hindi maraming mga pastor na tinawag ng Panginoon that early and they stayed, you know, very, very long in the ministry, 52 years preaching. Hindi lahat na merong ganyang experience. So this was unique to Uzziah. You know, we have to be careful because when we have unique experience, it is not bad. Unique experience is not bad. Being a pastor's kid is not bad. In fact, it is a blessing. But let me remind you, it can be a breeding ground for pride. You know, like, well, hindi ikaw pinanganak sa pastor na tatay. I am. I grew up in the Christian home. Ikaw, you grew up in the house of Jezebel and Ahab. You know, you wicked family, religious but wicked. But we have some kind of experience na hindi po na-experience ng iba. Well, you might be telling the truth because it is the truth. But not realizing that that kind of experience can be the breeding ground for pride. You begin to develop, well, I'm better than you. I grew up in a Christian home. Ikaw hindi. So, we have to be very careful. Although it's not wrong. When we have unique experience, successful in his endeavor. You have, we have just read everything in the Isaiah Chronicles 26. He built cities. If we may apply it in our time as a pastor, there was a very good building programs. Nothing wrong with it. He has a powerful army. Army of staff and church workers. Nothing wrong with that. Because these are people that, you know, God uses. And we also some kind of brag about our education, if we're not careful. When I say that, I'm not putting premium in ignorance. You know, Pastor Benny is always reminding us that we should not be stupid. One of the things that we develop in our leadership is competence. Hindi lahat po ng mga pastor is competent for whatever reason. I, I'm not trying to judge now, but I, I have seen this in my lifetime na merong mga pastor na hindi talaga kailangan magpastor. I don't know, maybe they are not called or they are not willing to pay the price. Because somehow, sometimes, we thought that being a pastor... The, the job that we are only involved is preaching. Well, it's more than that. Hindi lang po yung pagwali, madali lang yun. Anybody can do it. 
Uh, we know about someone in Negros that every time he is drunk, he would preach. And he would speak English. Kaya sabi nga ni Dr. Isaba, may nag-preach doon. Uh, tapos may nagpunta sa kanya, sabi niyang mga tao, Congratulations, that was a good message. Yeah, hindi pa nga ako nakainom ng tuba eh. Iba, iba pa yun kung nakainom ako ng tuba. I mean, anybody can do it. We, we know. Now, don't get me wrong. I, 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 I love preachers. I love preaching. Well, in my times nga wala akong ginagawa, I listen to preachers. I listen to preaching. Not only because we learn, but we just... But sometimes we can be deceived. Just because a person is dynamic does not mean that he is real. You know, kung kiss a balas, ilong anto, kung ilong ganaw, sometimes we thought that, wow, he's a, he's a great preacher. Why? Pinagtapon yung microphone, sinipan yung ba, yung, uh, you don't do it here because uh, I know that uh, mahal yung mga microphone sila. But you know, we always equate uh, some kind of a belly Sunday Kinuha yung mahal na mga tapos to illustrate something. Wow! And then people say, wow, he is dynamic. No, he is stupid. <laughs> Trying to destroy the prophet of a church when you are just invited is a stupid thing. It's not dynamism. You know, we sometimes look up to someone, wow, his English is just, I don't know. I, don't, I cannot understand. Well, the problem is even the speaker does not understand. <laughs> Marami tayong ginagamit ng mga words. You know, we, we threw some Greek words and Hebrew. The only Hebrew I know is Shalom. That's it. I don't need to learn Hebrew. But the point I'm saying is uh, we have a lot of people like that. We have some kind of letters behind our names. And by the way, it's nothing. It's not wrong. To get an education. You have really worked for it. You have a doctor of theology. And you, nag, ano ba yung Tagalog, nag, nagsunog ng, ng kilay. You really work for it. Pero kung ikaw, out of the blue, naging doktor ka, <laughs> tapos hindi ka nga nag, ah, nag... Sometimes I'm very careful. You know, somebody actually gave me some kind of honorary. Well, I'm not trying to be, you know, unkind and but it's okay. But I told our people, don't use it because somebody might come to the church and, you know, ask for uh, magpa, ano ba yun, magpa, magpa check up. <laughs> Kaya kayong mga pastor, hindi nyo ilagay yung mga pangalan nyo sa labas, doktor, tapos marami magpunta dyan. <laughs> Dahil simbahan yun, walang bayad, marami magpa check up. Mahirapan ka mag, mag, ano yun? Ha? Huh? Explaining, no, 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 I'm sorry, but I have a son who is a doctor, but I'm not uh, a doctor, I'm a quack doctor. <laughs> Here we have some kind of red flag, so to speak. Then also unique accomplishment, whatever that is. You know, not in, we cannot deny the fact that there are people who are really greatly used of God. This ministry still amazes me. Because 1977, we actually came in Santa Ana, if you still remember, Pastor Abante. A group of students uh, do, with Dr. Pastor Vladai, nagpunta kami rito, this is not the... Tapos, you had a, a impromptu service. For whatever reason, sino mag-preach? Sino mag... You know, we, we did, it didn't volunteer. I mean, it was just... Wow, meron kami kasama, nag-volunteer. Ako yung speaker. Sabi, sabi ng mga classmates, na. You know, in Cebuano, basta yung expression, na. Mahirap na yun, na. So, he stood, I don't know if you remember, but he was preaching and nobody understood him. Even himself. We thought he was speaking Chinese because he was a Chinese, some kind of a, may dugong insect. Sabi ko, Brother, ano itong winali mo? What did you preach? I don't know. I didn't even know I was preaching. <laughs> Here is a first graduate. And we are, we're not prepared for that because nandoon lang kami magbisita dito, Santa Ana. 
And that was 1977. So you will understand me why I have some kind of idea. The amazing work of God through the years. That was 1977, almost 50 years, right? And here we have, by the grace of God. Now who can ever question that God is blessing this ministry? Unless you are in Git, you know. And that's really something also we need to warn ourselves and be careful. Because sometimes maybe you are criticizing this man because you are in Git. Not really because uh, you thought he's doing wrong. Maybe you agree with him that he will preach in the Congress and gay Bibles. You have no problem with it. But you are just in Git. And that's also a struggle for us. Hindi yan makita eh. Hindi yan masabi minsan. Just there but... Deep down in your heart, you're just, wow, accomplishment. And there are people, but of course, you know, if you know the history of this church and the history of what the Abantes have gone through, uh, you know what I'm talking about. This ministry did not come easy. Hindi po ito nahulog galing sa langit. Kaya all of a sudden, wow! No, no, no. Somebody work hard for this by the grace of God. And God bless his effort and his labor. And now he's not keeping it for himself because he could have done it, you know. He does not need a crowd because he is not uh, emboldened to some financial support from outside. Dahil kita minsan, kung meron nagsasupport sa atin sa labas, you have to give a report. Tapos yung bloated na report, tapos magkisana lang magkuha ng picture, maski... Nagmarcha yung mga Santo Nino, kinuha mo picture, attendance mo na yun. And yung supporter mo, wow! Malaking gawain doon sa... Uh, I'm not trying to judge people, but I know it is happening. When your motive is wrong, you sometimes do stupid things. You know. Sabi nga ni Pastor Abanti, maski wala tayo dito, this work, and go on and continue. Kaya ako, I'm happy tonight that Pastor Abante is happy. Because when he is happy, he is giving money. I don't know if he's going to do it tonight. I mean, yun ang matandaan ko. I'm not asking for it. Kaya ako maligaya, ako maligaya siya. I'm scared and nervous when he is mad. And I've seen that in him sometime. And because he's a human being, he has the right to get mad. So I, sabi natin, oh, si Pastor Abante ang galit. Bakit hindi siya magalit? Wala ba siyang karapatan na magalit? Tama ba yung Tagalog ko? <laughs> Meron naman. He has all the right. You know, but simply put, he does not really need us for him to exist. He has been so gracious to share his blessing and abundance. Kaya sabi ko, wow, maligaya si pastor ngayon. Alam kong magbibigay ito ng quote. <laughs> hindi natin pahaba, pahabain ito. Baka hindi natin mabigyan ng pera. <laughs> ah, you have this unique knowledge. You know, sometimes if you're not careful, you tend to brag about your knowledge, about, you know, I'm the only person that can reconcile the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. Oh, mahirap yan. Yung nga mga theologian, nahirapan sila pag-reconcile eh. Ikaw pa? Na bago ka lang graduate sa Bible College? Hindi mo makalam yung ano yung mga enpra, sobra, akala ko mga, so, mga antibiotics ron eh. But, be careful with knowledge that, you know, you brag about and you preach as if you are the most uh, knowledgeable person. We are only what we are because of the grace of God. Yeah. And uh, being uh, proud, you know, you neck attention. This is also something we have to be, because you become a rock star. Wow. You are always invited. You have to prepare 10 years Para may imbita mo siya. Ten years para sa love gift. Ten years para sa hotel. Ten years. Ay, babalik na ang Panginoon. Hindi pa siya makapu... Now, look! 
have you ever thought and realized that we don't need to invite him for us to know what, you know, the things he's trying to teach us? We came here and uh, we are fed, we are uh, merong accommodation, merong, I don't know, ano pang pwede niyang gawin? Nauna na yung cellphone, may susunod pa yan. I mean, I'm, I'm just guessing. Now, hindi niya, wala silang sinabi sa akin. I'm just, it's just my thought. I'm free to do it, you know. I'm just thinking because, because I know that every time this man is happy, he will always do things that will make us happy. Whether it is class or whether it is pamasahe, I don't know. Pero, now look, kapatid, maski hindi tayo mabigyan ng maski ano, just nothing. We just came and learned all those things. That's more than enough. Para sa akin, that's okay. You know, if you're going to invite him, we spend a lot of money and um, hindi tayo, we cannot afford. Maybe. Dito, wow. Free education. Blessing. Unique gifts. Oh, by the way, By the way, Uzziah was very prosperous. Money was not a problem, so to speak. And by the way, he was a devout man of God. This is something that's really difficult to process. How can a devout man of God with a godly heritage, wise counselors, can become a casualty? Have you ever thought about that? How in the world that this man, who was in the lineage of godly people, the grandson of I was listening to the testimony of Alice Cooper. How many of you know Alice Cooper? Yeah, the rock star. Oh. Imagine, tatlo lang kami. Kayong lahat, puro mga, mga millennium. Kami lang, dalawa. Di Pastor Abante siguro, may isang kamay doon. O oh, ito, matanda rin. Okay, anyway. May, maybe you know, you heard. Did you know that this man, who literally sold his soul to Satan, grew up in a Baptist home? His father was a pastor. His grandpa was an evangelist. The father of his wife was a Baptist pastor. Then out of the blue, he decided to serve Satan. He became a rock star. You, you have seen that picture of him? You know, the eyes, just satanic. So evil. Hindi lang naging atheist, totally sold out to Satan. But you know what happened? 25 years after, bumalik siya. He came back. Something unbelievable. Pero nangyari, ngayon he is now a different person. And he's now beginning to share Christ. He said, I will not stop my art as a singer, but I will keep on preaching Christ. So we who are very judgmental and some kind of critical might say, wow, bakit ganon? Well, let me tell you, tonight, we have one experience in our church. We have a piano for about 40 years na linagay namin doon sa bodega. Wala nang gamit. The, the, the body is almost turned out. The, wala na talaga. May nagpunta doon piano tuner. Sabi niya, bilhin ko ito, Pastor. Sabi ko, how much? Sabi niya, 5,000 lang. Sabi ko, ang mura naman. Na, 25,000. Ah, hindi. You know, he was taking advantage because I don't know piano. I have a daughter who plays the piano, but so I made an offer. Sabi ko, how about fixing this for us? Well, I can do it. Now, remember, that piano has been there for the, the last 40 years or 25 years. Uh, I hope I'm right. I'm having some senior moments. But, kinuha niya. It was worn out. It was almost like hindi na magamit. Sabi niya, bigyan mo ako ng two months. I'll fix it. After two months, we almost did not recognize the piano. The piano that was out of tune. The piano that was worn out. Kinain na ng mga anay. Anay ba yan? Sa Tagalog din? Talagang wala na talaga. I mean, it's okay for me to just give it away to get rid of a garbage or basura. That's okay. 
So sabi ko, bakit naman ibigay ko? Baka pwede pa. My friend, after two months, the piano came back. It was brand new. I was reminded of lives. Some of them are pastor's kids that have been drifting away for a long time. Pero may tatay sila na nagpa-pray. Na, ano ba yung Tagalog? Nag-pray? Nalangin. Na, na, na langin. Never give up. They were out of June. They were broken. They were almost nothing. But when the greatest piano tuner of the universe began to intervene and God made them and right now we are using that piano it's playing again it's being a blessing again don't give up on people that you thought are hopeless there's no hopeless case with God when I was a young pastor in San Carlos and I'm just young 21, 20 years old I had a very unique experience Merong judge dito sa Quezon City na assigned doon sa San Carlos. Judge Bernardo Bonia. I cannot re- uh, forget him. Nagpunta San Carlos, he was not a Christian. He was an unbeliever. Meron kami member na nag-massage. Uh, Inimbita siya at saka yung kaibigan niyang judge din. One Sunday, these two judges came to our church. Eh, alam kong hindi yung ordinary mga tao eh because... Not only he was in, from Manila, but sabi ko, ito talagang, he introduced himself, I'm Judge Boni. Oh, I tell you, I want to run away. I want to hide. I don't want to preach to these two judges who are sitting at the front. And that Sunday, I was about to preach about sin. I said, boy, this is difficult. How could I do this? These are two, I mean, I'm, I was intimidated. I was young. Parang gusto ko lang na, I don't know where to go. But God gave me the wisdom. I said, Lord, I need your help. I just, I just want to preach. So I preach. And the service was over. Umalis sila. Sabi ko, ay, salamat. Umalis din yung dalawang kuan. <laughs> Judges. I, I really don't need them. I mean, that time. Ay, bumalik pagka next Sunday. Sabi ko, nandito na naman to. Mahirap to. Naka... Naka, naka, I was sitting at the front, the close. Yung maabot na yung kuwang ko eh. Yung ano ba yun? Yung laway ko maabot sa kanila. I didn't mind if he will just sit at the back. Uh, that's okay. Anyway, I will not just you know, look at him. Pero nandoon sa harapan mo eh. May harap. That Sunday, Judge Bernardo Bonia stood up all of, out of the blue. He just stood up and raised his hand. Sabi niya, I want to be saved! Sabi. Sabi ko, hindi ba kaya ito nagkamali ito yung judge? <laughs> Bakit? So, nagtanggap siya. Sabi, that's okay. Save na siya, pero sana hindi na babalik. <laughs> Bumalik na naman next Sunday. Sabi ko, ano ba ito? And I was preaching again, a little bit confident, little bit. Not really. At the end of the service, I had invitation. He stood up again. And shouted, I want to be baptized! Na! Problema na talaga ito. <laughs> Dahil ma-member ko na itong judge. You know, but deep down in my heart, I have some kind of pride. You know, wow, Pastor Eddie, my member na judge. Huwag kayong magwan, ha? Ano ba yun? Magkamali. <laughs> member niya judge. A month later, the wife Went to San, came to San Carlos. I got to meet him. Sabi niya, Pastor, I'm really happy that my husband professed faith in Christ. I've been praying for him for a long, long time. I was about to grab the credit. I thought it was me. Well, actually, it was not me. I'm not even sure if he understood me. He graduated from UP. He was some kind of a well-known. Pastor, I've been praying for my, wife, for my husband. Now I know that it was not me. It was the praying wife. 
Then when his term end, ended in San Carlos, sabi niya, Pastor, you pray for me. Pag-pray mo ako. I'm now retired. I'm going to become a pastor. Wow, sabi ko. Alam ba kaya ni Judge itong sinasabi niya? Alam ba kaya niya magpastor siya? But that was his determination then. I think he was trying to make up for the many years na, you know, you know what I'm saying. But the prayer of the wife. Then, a year later, I read in the newspaper that Judge Bernardo Boni passed away. But I was just glad that San Carlos was a place where God spoke to him using, him, using a, a young preacher uh, as an instrument to preach the gospel. But it was not me. It was the prayer of the wife. I'm simply saying tonight, mga kapatid, you may have the unique gifts, you have everything, you are devout. You know what the Bible said in verse 16? But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Pride led to his downfall. Our hearts are most susceptible when we experience success. Be on guard when you are in success. That's why we need to pray for this man. Because with all intents and purposes, I don't know how, what you can say about it, but he is just the epitome of success. I mean, sinabi niya yan eh. I don't have to add, add to this, but he himself said that nasa kanya na ang lahat. Do you agree? I mean, the way I see it, ano pang hanapin niya? Wala na. But why is it he's still in the ministry? Well, because he has a commitment to be a blessing to others. I know that his commitment to the Lord is so strong that he was really, he's willing to give up anything if God will ask for it. If tonight, God will speak to him, ang sabihan siya ng Panginoon, Pastor Abante, ibigay mo yung Bentley kay Pastor Eddie. I mean, do you think he will obey it? Come on, help me now. Do you think he will obey it? If it is the Lord. Kaya lang, ang problema, pagpunta ko sa kanya, But the other, ang nakiusap sa'yo ang Panginoon, hindi naman nakiusap sa akin. <laughs> Ikaw lang. Uh, merong pastor doon sa Mindanao na talagang mahirap. I mean, he was just struggling. Can you imagine na uh, mag-pray ka sa pagkain mo na wala pa sa lamisa? And uh, one day, he was out. Wala talagang makain. Nakita niyo yung aso, may kagat na bangos. Sabi niya, ito na yung, uh, what is that in Tagalog? Huh? Sagot ng Panginoon I, He ran up to the, the dog Can you imagine who was, He was a pastor Talagang huh? Hinabol niya yung aso Nakuha talaga yung Bangos na priska pa Sabi siguro ng aso Itong pastor na ito Walang, walang awa <laughs> Ako ang nakauna sa isda Tapos kunin pa sa akin Ganyan kahirap ang mga pastor noon. I mean, I mean you know that. Uh, some of you don't, don't know that. But kaming mga, you know, ano bang tawag sa atin, Dr. Abante? We are baby boomers. A veteran. We saw it all. Talagang mahirap yun. I remember the first time si Pastor Abante talk about owning the first car. The first Filipino pastor na nakabili ng sasakyan. Malaking kwan yun. That was a big news. It was like winning the loto. Meron ng isang pastor, posible parang magawa yun, mangyari yun. O kaya, you know, we look at the person that it is anything is possible and he did it. Kaya ngayon, sunod-sunod na tayo, meron ng sasakyan, meron ng, you know, hindi na masyadong mahirap ang mga pastor ngayon. I mean, if you apply the principle that we are learning in this church, So, may building project siya. Nagpunta siya doon sa uh, uh, sewing mill. Pinuntahan niya ng manager. Manager, pinadala ko dito ng Panginoon. Sabi ng Panginoon, ikaw daw ang magbibigay sa akin ng mga kahoy para mapatayo ko ng siban. Sabi niya, Pastor, hindi ba nagpunta rito ang Panginoon? Hindi siya, wala siyang sinabi. <laughs> may may yun. 
I, I really, you know, there were times it was really difficult. I mean, to the point that parang mahirap talaga, to the point that, you know, it's almost like begging. Uh, kaya nung una, mahirap din mag, ang magpastor eh. So, when he has everything, success, his heart was lifted. That's very dangerous. If you cannot handle success, don't ask for it. I never dreamed to become a congressman. Never in my life. Never. Why should I say I am capable? Because I'm not. I'm not competent. The only thing I know in my life that I hope will stay is preaching. That's the only one I know. I don't know music. I don't know nothing. I just want to preach. That's why... Yun ang sinabi ko sa Panginoon, Lord, I just want to preach. Just keep me alive. I will keep on preaching. And I keep my promise. Hanggang may buhay pa ako. Tama ba yun? Ha? Tama. Hanggang may buhay pa ako. Yo, may hininga ako. Tama. I think that's the most poetic there. Hanggang may hininga pa ako, hindi ako mag hinto. So, magtitigil, can you imagine, we are learning Tagalog here. This is just stupid. Mga Pilipino tayo, hindi marunong magtagalog. Hindi ako titigil sa pag-preach. And literally, honestly, I have to tell you, honest, to me, preaching is my life. I think if I'm going to quit preaching, I'll die. That's why I won't stop preaching. I just still want to live. Gusto, gusto ko pang mabuhay. That's the only one I know in life. I can never be a congressman, not even a barangay captain. I'm not confident that God did not call me. But there are people, for whatever reason, God raised in a time of crisis, that sometimes we may not understand why. We don't really know why Esther came to that place and Bastai, the queen, was removed. And uh, the king read some records and Haman was executed. We didn't know that. In fact, the book of Easter is the only book in the Bible that the word God is not mentioned. There are things in life we don't understand. We don't know the whole story. That's why don't judge people of what they're doing. You may not agree. The Baptist day will, will never be realized if not for Pastor Abante. Mayor Esco could have never heard the gospel last night if he's not a congressman. The influence that God put him in a position using it for his glory. Kaya kailangan natin ipag-pray siya. Nabigyan pa siya ng mahabang buhay, hindi lang sa Congress, siguro sa, sa, sina, sa Senado din. I mean, I don't know. Marami tayong bagay na hindi natin alam ngayon. But God knows the future. He knows what He's doing because He is a sovereign God. Okay pa kayo? Yeah. Tatlong points pa ito. <laughs> Demonstration of pride. How do you know that pride is beginning to sit in? Number one, decrease time with God. Kung medyo ma, you used to pray, you know, but ngayon dahil you are so busy about many things, ang nasacrifice yung time with God. I heard a preacher here in Manila. He said, yung mga Kristiyano nagsasabi that I have no time, it's, it's a myth. He was using that word. It is a myth. It is not true that you have no time. We always have time. Pariho tayo ng oras 24-7. Kaya sabi na, I have no time. Well, the honest and full truth is, your, prob truth is, your problem is not really, you have no time. It is not important to you. It is not your priority. So when you're saying, I will not come to church because I'm busy with this and that, the point is that you are not, God is not important to you, and he, the church is not your priority. That's the honest and full truth there. If we all be honest, technology, social media, and even time we call fellowship deprive us of time we are supposed to spend with God. We all understand that. This technology is a blessing, believe me. Ako nga, I'm so happy na umabot pa ako ng panahon. Can you imagine if I died earlier? 
yung mga tao sa langit, they will be talking about Facebook. And so, and makinig ako, ano ba yung sinasabi nyo? Social media, marites. I cannot understand that. Well, I'm glad I, I came to this point na, uh, at least I know, I'm not a thick guy, you know, lots of things. I'd, my granddaughter, who is just five years old, mas mar- marami pang alam sa akin sa... sa can you imagine? It's just amazing. Tayong mga matatanda na, we always ask them, please come, help me. Can you imagine? But listen, pride is I don't need to seek God because I have knowledge. Operating in pride is trusting reserves instead of overflow. God wants us to set in His presence. God wants us to continue doing that. All of us understand what a lubat is. All of us use power tools. We know how important it is to have it fully charged. So our spiritual batteries must be fully charged. But sometimes we are not. We fool a lot of people. God knows when we do. We give information but no transformation. And what else? Touching things that are off limits and never think you can get away with it. Uzziah was a king. But he has no business doing sacrifice in the temple. That was not his cup of tea. That was not his domain. He was okay. He was powerful. Yes, he has. Pero may mga bagay po sa buhay natin na off limits. Na hindi natin pwedeng pasukan. Hindi mo po pwedeng pasukan yung asawa sa, na may asawa. O ano ba yun sa Tagalog? Tama ba yun? I'm talking about immorality, which is rampant. Pastor Benny talk about it. I thought he was just joking about mga pastor na, I, I, I really hate to say this because I don't want to impute something on the men of God. Pero totoo naman yan eh. Minsan, we become so powerful and proud. We thought that we can just do anything. No. May mga bagay po hindi natin pwedeng gawin. And and Uzziah forced himself to, he got into the inside of the temple. He wants to burn incense. He's, it was not his job. He was not allowed to do it. So what happened? Lumabas yung uh, utsenta na mga, ano ba yung sabar? Yung mga malalakas, ma, malaki ang katawan. Ha? Huh? Mga bouncer na mga malalaking, you know. And he was just forced out. Can you imagine the king? was no longer disrespected by this man because he was doing something. Namaski yung mga tao doon, nalaman lang, hindi ito mali, hindi ito tama, mali ito. This is none of your business to get inside. This is an off-limit. This is not your work. This is not your domain. Hindi po pwede ito mahal na hari. Mga kapatid, listen, just because we are a pastor does not mean that we can do anything. There is always a boundary. There is off limit. There are things you never touch. Never touch someone who is not your wife. Never touch the money of the church that does not belong to you. Never touch, and not even, you know, touch not my anointed, the Bible said. Like criticizing and condemning a man of God who is doing something for the Lord. God will discipline us if we are going to do it. And yun ang nangyari kay Uzziah. He was so, again, so self-absorbed, self-centered, na look, yung mga problema natin na malaki, hindi talaga yung sa mundo na ano yun. I know it's a problem, but your, the, your biggest enemy is yourself. Not really Satan. Sabi ko, people are saying, Satan is after me. Who are you that Satan will run after you? Siguro is Pastor Rabante, maybe. Pero tayo yung mga sundalo lang. Bakit padalan tayo ng Satan para ma, uh, yung mag, you know, you know what I'm saying? But uh, the point is, we have to be very careful because it can happen to anyone. You think about worldliness. You heard the story about the nudist camp. You know, it's a place where people trying to live by the principle of the Garden of Eden. Hindi sila nagbibihis, wala silang damit. These people, you know, they just, whatever reason, nasa isla sila. So, one time, they decided to become religious. 
So, nag-invite sila ng pastor. Sabi nila, hindi ito mangyari. This only one. We'll invite a pastor to, to preach to us the word. Pinimita yung pastor. Eh, nagpunta yung pastor. Sabi niya, wow, this is just a great opportunity. These people, you know, they never heard the gospel. They're living in an island. And it's hard to reach them. And I have to be like them to reach them, you know. The principle sometimes, if you want to catch a thief, you, you heard that, takes a thief to catch a thief. Well, that's the thief. But you're not a thief. Why should you be? So, nagpunta sa doon, and the service was well prepared and arranged. The, the, all the lights were turned off, very dramatic entrance. And the MC said, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Reverend uh, so-and-so, our speaker tonight. And he was there, you know, and then the music was very soothing, and the lights little by little, and all of a sudden it burst, wow! Yung lahat ng mga members sa New Disc Camp, nagsuot ng damit. <laughs> siya lang ang walang damit. <laughs> Hanap siya ng lugar saan, kaya ako pupunta dito. You know why? Because all along he was thinking, I have to be like them. Because they are nude, so I have to be nude myself. Well, that's not in the mind of those people. They have more respect for the pastor because they said, this is a man of God. We should dress up. We should put clothing in our body. We should not do something because we should respect him. And that pastor who was compromising, who was trying to be a thief to catch the thief. Wow. I don't know if he resigned. I think he should. Amen? Amen. Sabi nga nila, kailangan mag tayo para yung mga lasagiro, mawi na, you don't have to do that. I mean, be not conformed to this, but be transformed. The friendship of this world is enmity with God. Number three, the last. Amen? I'm about to close. Believe me, dangerous demonstration of pride. The way we handle criticism and corrections is a display of pride. I'm glad Pastor Benny mentioned about maraming mga critical, judgmental against him, but he is not answering back. It is an expression of a very mature Christian. In the, I don't know, but I have been to a lot of elections. This, is elect, this election is really phenomenal. With your respect to Pastor Abante, uh, Esco being his uh, president. This is phenomenal because for the first time, 31 million. Na, oh, nag yung taga Ilocos na. <laughs> taga Batak. Oh, well, it, that's really true. I've been studying about why. One of the things I really, I mean, I'm, I might be wrong, but I think the strategy of BBM was working. Not answering back to his detractors, enemies. He is, well, was not joining, oh, nag-imit pa itong isang Ilocana din, nag, not answering, you know, those, not joining even the debate because he can be put on the spot. The perception of people is that here is a guy who can have actually, he can, I mean, he knows. He's not stupid. I mean, he knows what to do, but he simply just decided not to join the boxing, so to speak. I think that's one of the reasons we won. I, it's just a matter of personal opinion. Kaya sabi ko, thankfully, masunod natin yan sa mga pastor, kagaya ni Pastor Bante. Don't answer back. Just leave them alone because some of them are just ingit. Some of them are just nothing to, you know. Some of them are just trying to get attention. Posting on the Facebook, attacking uh, uh, someone, uh, you, you know. So, hoping that many will follow you. People have, ang mga taong mag-isip-isip yan. Why are you doing this? You're supposed to be respectful because you're a Christian and you're trying to destroy the reputation of a pastor who is doing so much for other pastors. How could you be ungrateful? Punta ka rito, pinasayan ka, 
Pinakain ka, pinatulog ka, pinadalang ka pa ng cellphone, then after you got back to your place, putak ng putak ka, ano yun? Sabi ni Pastor Abani, putak ng putak dahil walang utak. Tama ba yun? Oh, I learned that. We, we, have, we have many differences. We, believe, we know that. Every one of us, meron tayo mga, but we don't have to make that as an issue to destroy other people. Dahil, you know, it's not even fair for the person na hindi niya alam. You don't know the whole story. Maghintay ka when you know the whole story, that's the time. Pero marami pang hindi natin alam. So we have no right to judge and condemn person who, who you know, hindi pa natin alam. He was surrounded by people, uh, with people, uh, you know, uh, it's good to be loyal. It's good to respect the man of God. But when you are surrounded with people na, who don't have the courage to tell, uh, Pastor, I think, uh, you know, some kind of suggestion, because the, the real man of God would listen. Makinig siya. And he's not really manipulating people. Why, why should he do that? He's not controlling. Why should he do that? When he can even exist alone. Kaya lang gusto din niya na makita tayo para happy siya. Amen? Dahil kung happy siya, happy din tayo. Magbibigay rin ng pera. I'm done. Baka bukas pa ako matapos. Pastor Abante. Amen? My goodness. We do not need to invite any American speaker in a conference like this. Filipino lang, magaling na. Diba? Men of God, and I praise God. You know, Pastor Herodias has been there for 45 years. He's done a lot by experience, by instruction. And you can learn much from a man that has been there for a long, long time in the work of God. Shall we stand together, please?